Good afternoon. Hey, could I have all the men? Hi, Walter. Could I have all the members of Veterans for Peace come on up here? Rip the bag. You see the bag ripped? Bob My name is Pat Scanlon. I'm the coordinator for the Veterans for Peace for the Greater Boston area, the Smedley Butler Brigade, and um, Chapter 9. Um, and we're really proud to have our brother with us today. Um, and these are all my brothers and sisters in Veterans for Peace. Uh, we're a pretty large chapter. We have about 200 members on the books. Um, and on October 11th, um, some of you may recall that uh, they, they had occupied the piece of property uh, across the way here and uh, at 1.30 in the morning we stood between uh, the police and the, uh, uh, and the young occupiers and at 1.30 in the morning they came through us. Rachel over here, an Iraq vet, was the first person arrested and uh, I'm proud to say I was number two <laughs> but, but I watched them carry her away um, and people across the country um, saw that and across, the world. and across the world and saw what was happening and um, our ranks have swelled by 50 veterans have been showing up at Occupy everywhere um, you know as and recognizing that they are part of the 99 percent and that uh, and we're here to support the Occupy movement um, Jim Scarborough was is a highly decorated Vietnam veteran captain was in uh, uh, living in Costa Rica, and he saw that on the internet, and he got became so outraged, and he joined Veterans for Peace. He is our longest distant members of the Smedley Butler Brigade, and uh, contacted us immediately. And uh, with his outrage, as many veterans were outraged that they were knocking my guys down, and women down, and they, um, anyway, he he joined and he came here, notified us that he wanted to come here. To, um, to say a few words. So he's written a very powerful speech, and so we're all proud to stand with him, and I'd like to introduce Jim Scarborough. Yeah! Thank you, Pat. And thank you, everyone, for coming out. Uh, my name is Jim Scarborough. I'm a former U.S. Army infantry officer and a Vietnam combat veteran. Some of you have seen the sign that I'm carrying urging other veterans to join us in support of the Occupy movement and in defense of our First Amendment rights under the Constitution. However, I'm not here today because I'm a member of the 99%. I'm here as a member of that very elite group of our society. One not of privilege or wealth or power, but one bound together by shared sacrifice by mutual trust and by solemn oath to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. It is, an oath, it is an oath that I took as a young man when I accepted my commission to serve this country as a military officer that brings me here today. I remember as I spoke the words of that oath, the dignity and the honor that they invoked the pride in my nation and the sense of purpose and of grave responsibility that they conveyed. I said that I, James Robert Scarborough, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I'm about to enter, so help me God. Yeah. My grandfather, my father, my uncle, both of my brothers, and my son Kevin, who's here with me today, 
have all taken this same oath and served in the U.S. military in times of war. They and every other veteran and armed forces member have sworn to this oath. In doing so, we stand in a proud tradition that began on this very soil over 200 years ago before there was a professional military or even a United States. Those early soldiers were united then as we are now in a common purpose to defend their rights against a ruling elite of which they played no part and in which they had no voice. We stand with them, these early revolutionaries, our founding fathers, whose final words above their signatures on the De Declaration of Independence declared that we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Although my time of military service has long since passed, I've never been released of that oath, nor have I ever forsaken it. For I too have pledged my sacred honor. And the simple truth behind my being here today is that I consider myself to be honor bound and duty sworn by my oath to do so. In the early days of the Occupy protests, I saw Veterans for Peace and other veterans reciting their military oath as they stood up against the Boston police to protect the peaceful, nonviolent citizen protesters here in Boston. I then saw Marine Sergeant Shamer Thomas confront the New York City police at Occupy Wall Street, repeating over and over to them, there's no honor in this, there's no honor in this. I saw these things and I realized that I too must take a stand. I can't speak for all veterans in voicing my support for the Occupy movement. There are many veterans who may disagree about both of our, our aims and our tactics and they have every right as free Americans to do so. However, I think I can speak for all veterans in saying that whatever our differences and whatever our opinions, we consider it our sacred honor and our charge to defend the Constitution of the United States. This is our sworn oath. It is this commitment to bear true faith and allegiance to our oath and to each other that binds us together as a band of brothers and sisters. We say to each other, I've got your back. And this has always been the true essence of military service. It is our allegiance to this oath that both separates us and binds us with those we serve, the people of the United States. To each of the veterans that are here today and across the nation who have stood up in defense of the Occupy protesters and in defense of the Constitution, I say, brothers and sisters, I've got your back. Veterans are separate. Veterans are separate from the general population in the sense that we've undertaken a special responsibility to stand in defense of this nation, even unto death. And many of our comrades, including some of my closest friends, have given their last full measure and paid the ultimate price. As a group, we've earned a special place in society, one that we've paid for with shared sacrifice, with faithful service, and often with our blood. So my reason for being here is far more than a protest against broken government and social injustice. For me, it is a matter of my personal honor. And although I may not speak for all veterans, I do hope to speak to all veterans and add my voice to the growing number of us who have spoken out in defense of our freedom and of our rights under the First Amendment. It was here in the streets of Boston that our American form of democracy was born. The grievances of those American colonists against the British Crown were no more severe than those we have today against our own government. Those grievances coupled excuse me. Those grievances coupled with the arrogance and intransigence of the British Crown and the ruling classes resulted in the armed revolution that bought us our freedom and our independence. I think that we would be well served to remember what our founding fathers said in our Declaration of Independence. 
that governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to effect their safety and happiness. All of us know these words, but they're far more than the dry words of a history text. They are the foundation of our very form of government, and they're our heritage as a free people. If we forget this, if we lose sight of the meaning and the purpose of these words, we forget everything we stand for as a nation, and we bring dishonor upon ourselves and upon the memory of every brave American who has ever stood up in defense of these hard-earned freedoms. We are fortunate to enjoy the freedoms that our founding fathers won for us with their blood and their sacrifice. These freedoms are so integral to our system of values as a nation that they form the very foundation of our system of government and they comprise the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America that I have sworn to support and defend. They provide, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. These freedoms are the foundation upon which our society is built. There is nothing in the Constitution that creates or guarantees the rights of financial institutions, of corporations, or political parties, or paid lobbyists, or the rich and powerful to control and manipulate our government for their own ends and purposes. Yeah. 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 There is nothing in the Constitution that com contemplates the existence of a class of professional politicians whose driving impulse is to keep themselves and their political cronies in perpetual power. Yet these are the forces that we face today and they threaten everything we stand for as a nation. As a society, we have become so accustomed to the trappings and the institutions of government that we have lost sight of their purpose and their meaning. We have allowed our rights to erode bit by bit as they have been usurped by a privileged elite who now rule over us for their own benefit and to their own purposes. Our Constitution has served for centuries as an example to the entire world of how a free people can govern themselves through democratic means. It provides the framework for a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. And it guarantees the American people the right to choose our government. We are now told that elected and even appointed officials have the right to govern us. And that they have the right to choose the time, the place, and the manner in which we can exercise our rights of free speech, of assembly, and of petition to our government for redress of our grievances. I say to each of them, you are our servants, not our masters. I remind our elected officials and our appointed officials that it is to secure our rights that governments are instituted among men deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Our present form of government has become so destructive to those ends that we stand on the verge of withdrawing that consent and invoking our right to alter or abolish it and to institute new government. These are strong words, and this is a strong remedy, but they are not ours. They are those of our Founding Fathers expressed in the Declaration of Independence. But neither are they idle posturing or a, a historical curiosity. They are our heritage as a free people and our natural and constitutional right. 
We stand firm in our resolve to alter this government and return it to the people. Our Constitution provides us with the mechanisms to do so, not only through the elective process, but also through our rights of free speech, of peaceable assembly, and of petition to our government to redress our grievances. To deny these rights and ignore our grievances it is to blatantly disregard those values from which our nation was born. Many have criticized the Occupy movement, saying that we can't succeed or have lasting influence unless we evolve into a political movement. They say we must take sides in the upcoming elections, choose candidates, wage political campaigns, and express our views at the ballot box. I answer them by saying that our voices cannot be heard over the maddening din of partisan politics and broken campaign promises. Our vote isn't be, being counted. We cannot compete with Wall Street money. We can't compete with multi-million dollar political action committees. We can't compete with high-powered professional lobbyists. We can't compete with self-serving, hyper-partisan political parties. I say to them that the political process and the freedoms guaranteed under the Constitution encompass far more than the right to vote and to wage political campaigns. The true safeguard of our freedom and of our political process isn't to be found in our right to vote. Its true safeguard is found in the plain meaning of those rights guaranteed to us by the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Our freedom of speech, our freedom of peaceable assembly, and our right to petition our government for redress of grievances. The Occupy Movement is already the greatest demonstration in our nation's history of the power and of the necessity of the First Amendment. Through these protests, we are participating in the political process in its highest and most constitutionally protected form. I remind everyone of the words to the preamble to our Constitution that we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, did ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. It is we, the people of the United States, who own the Constitution. It is the living legacy of our forefathers, and it is our birthright. It shall not be taken from us or denied us because it's not convenient for government to concede to us those freedoms which are ours by right, not because government has given them to us. Yeah. Government derives its just powers from the consent of the governed. It's not the other way around. We, the people of the United States, rule this country, not the politicians in Washington who have failed to represent us, not the mayors in cities all across the country who have attempted to silence our voices, and not the police who have met peaceful protest with increasing violence and unjustifiable use of force. Not even the courts who were sworn to uphold the Constitution but who too often have twisted and perverted the plain meaning of the First Amendment and denied us the protection of our rights to speak freely, to assemble peaceably, and to petition our government for redress of our grievances. To those who criticize us, who say that we are a movement without leaders and without clear objectives, I answer that you misunderstand us. We are not a movement. We are the voice of a people who love our country and who are committed to save it.
We seek to restore the American dream, not to destroy it. And to return our nation to a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Join us in this common purpose, and together we can do this. United we stand, divided we fall. It's as simple as that. We call ourselves the 99%, but as a voice in our society and in our government, it is we who are the 1%. What we demand is a government and a society that is just and fair. One that is representative of and responsive to the people of the United States. We seek nothing more than this, and we will accept nothing less. Yes. Yes, we are the 99%, but as an organized group, we still remain small and relatively powerless. But our strength is growing, our determination is growing, and despite the forces arrayed against us, with your support, with everyone's support, we have the power of right and justice with us and the weight of history on our side, not on theirs. And so I say to you, my fellow veterans, and to every American who believes that we deserve a better government and a better society, borrowing the words of William Shakespeare, that we few, we band of brothers, have been called once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. This is a battle we can win, and we must win. Through our peaceful occupation and our sheer physical presence, through our resolve and our determination, we have already sounded a message that cannot long be ignored or dismissed. By our courage, by our determination, and by our resolve to continue this struggle until we have won the day, we shall prevail. For we are the 99% and we will take our country back. Yes! God bless the United States of America, and thank you. Yeah! Thank you, everyone. The veterans uh, who joined me up here today are going to join with me in reciting our military oath. I'll lead it. I know everyone doesn't have it committed to memory. I, state your name. I, Pat Stanton. Do solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. And that I will well and faithfully discharge the duties of the office on which I am about to enter, so help me God. Thank you,